When you read a book, do you remember all the details? And if you read that book over several months or a semester, would you remember the material at the beginning as well as the middle and the end? When you have an instructor explain something, do you remember it accurately? Taking notes helps in both those situations to remember information that is presented to you. Bruce Ballinger describes note-taking as having a dialogue with the author. As the author or presenter shares ideas, your notes track the ideas and call attention to material that you want to respond to. Whether you are simply recording what is shared or planning to respond, your notes will be an important resource to refer to. The purpose of taking notes is to implant information into your memory that you have received. You may have heard the phrase, in one ear and out the other, which refers to the idea that unless you absorb the information, it only has a temporary spot in your short-term memory. However, if you interact with the information by writing it down, saying it aloud, or using another medium to express the idea in your own phrasing, the material has a more permanent spot in your memory. The more often you express the idea in any medium, the stronger your understanding becomes and the more permanent the idea is in your memory. In addition, your notes provide a source for you to review the material as you have recorded what was presented to you in your own words. However, remember that this is a record of your understanding or perception of what was presented. Make sure your notes make sense to you and that they reflect the material accurately. Whether the material is presented orally, such as a lecture or television program, or written, such as from a book or an article to read, the purpose of the notes is the same, to implant information more firmly in your memory. There are three main styles of note-taking, although there may be others. For many years, the Cornell method was taught in schools. Graphic organizers, also called idea maps and spidographs, are a visual diagram of the relationship between main ideas and the supporting information. Outlines are useful if the material is presented in a very orderly and organized framework. Each of these styles is beneficial in their own way, so let's look at them. The Cornell method has two columns, as in the example on the right. Traditionally, the left column is two and a half inches from the left margin, although it doesn't have to be exact. In fact, I simply draw a line. The important part is to recognize that the left column is for headings and major terms. The right column is much wider and is for supporting and explanatory information. At the bottom, the last two inches is for a summary. Graphic organizers and idea maps and spider graphs are synonymous terms for diagrams that show relationships between major and minor concepts, terminology, and other important information. Notice in the example the major topic is in bold large letters, and there are three major types that connect with the major topic. The major concepts have definitions and supporting ideas, but there is no hierarchy in this style. All the information is in relation to the major concept and you can easily squeeze in another idea. Each cluster can become its own diagram, so this can become a great tool to describe relationships. This style of note-taking works great for creative people that don't like to write in neat lines but prefer to use diagrams and charts. Outlines are useful to organize material, but as a style of note-taking it is important that the presenter is well organized. The information needs to be presented in order, so the outline is orderly. For this reason, it is often used when taking notes from written material, and many instructors suggest students outline each chapter. However, outlines are difficult to use if the presenter bounces around and returns to previously presented material to add another tidbit of information. You may decide that you want to combine elements of these or develop your own style. That is great. Just make sure your notes are useful to you. You may find that the Cornell method of note-taking works well for psychology, but the idea map works better for history. 
That is fine also. Remember, your notes are for you, so develop what works for you. Many people wonder what to include in their notes, especially the first few chapters or days of class. Apparently, many students already know that material. I suggest that when a presenter shares information, they anticipate the learner to need that information, and the presenter is laying the foundation for future concepts. So if you know information being presented, expect that you will need to know it in the same framework and application it is being shared. This is true if the information is new to you or if you already know about it, especially from a different context or discipline. No matter what style of notes you use, there are some general guidelines. First, make sure you leave some white space between concepts so that you have room for questions and answers and other information that you gather to understand the material. If you fill each page with information, often your brain perceives there is too much information and will be overwhelmed. Look at a text. There are extra spaces between sections and margins so that you can grasp the material. Make sure your notes are not too cluttered to the point of being overwhelming. The last general guideline is to remember to use phrases, abbreviations, symbols, codes, and so on, so that you can be brief. In addition, use phrases and don't worry about grammar, spelling, and other tools of language. Keep your notes simple and understandable. The most important element of note-taking is that your notes should represent your understanding of the information presented and in your own style. Notes should be clear to you and for your learning. If you share notes with someone, remember they took notes in their style and you will need to interpret and ask questions. With that in mind, make sure to review your notes daily and ask questions about what is unclear or confusing and leave room for your questions and answers.